I get everybody fresh today without being worn out from the other guys, right? Okay, um, listen, as usual, I don't have a lot to say. We're looking forward to the next game here. Happy about getting the win last week. Would have liked to have played a little bit better, but we ended up with more points than they, than they had and won the game. So with that, we'll turn our attention to the next opponent, and I'll open it up. Yeah, there was so it was two series at the end of the half, right? I mean, I think it's twenty-seven noth nothing. If my mind, uh, if I'm, my mind is right here, was it a turnover? And then what, what was not good uh, when we talked about it was we didn't play sudden challenge or sudden change situations really good, and we have to do that in this league. So, no matter where the ball was put, I think one was on the forty-two, and one might have been in the plus territory, but. Uh, no, more, no matter what happens there, we either got to get them three and out or at least hold them to a field goal if they're in field goal range. Um, that was disappointing. It, it, it brought us into the locker room with a different feeling than we should have had. But I'll say this, there was a silver lining to that. Um, you know, we came in the locker room, it's, it doesn't feel good, right? You were up 27 nothing. But I thought we responded well after the first drive of the second half um, because we, we had that one play. That, that, that play is the one... So in, in a lot of games, you remember only a few plays, right? Forever in that game, it's the screen I'm going to remember. Those, those are the ones that stick there. And we should have we got that guy on, on the ground and found a way to get off the field. But um, sudden challenge situations, we've got to play better. If you're looking at defensive backs, have largely been <coughs> impressive for how young they are this year, and they seem like a little bit of a, a setback. What do you think is left for them to just feel like they're, they're confident and ready to go? And yeah, you, you hit the word you just said about confident is a big one. I mean, I felt like... I remember way back when when we had Jalen in there because um, Trent got hurt and he plays against the Chargers. He gets that interception. That was tremendous for him. You know, Josh Williams is in there fighting as a rookie, and I forget what game it is, but he had the pick right in the red zone. That was great confidence for him. You know, and then there's and, – and as, the, as we get closer, and we talk about this all the time, as we get closer and closer to what we hope is a playoff run, et cetera, et cetera, the game changes. It gets faster. Uh, teams we play are going to be better. We faced a better team. We played Cincinnati, and the same thing with last week. And the guy's got to step up. So there's a little bit of growing pain still there. Uh, but there's a lot of downs there. I say this all the time about corners. You know, there's a lot of downs where those guys are doing a really good job that go unnoticed because the ball doesn't get thrown there. And uh, there's been a lot of downs where they've done a nice job with that. Steve, how do you coach I mean, confidence? Because you always work with the guys and, you know, yeah. all season, everything, one-on-one, -on -one individually. And, and you, know, you get a feel for what they are mentally. But how do you go across coaching that? Well, you, uh, again, you might have said it in your statement there. I think you build it with a player, at least for me personally as a quarterback, in a one-on-one. -on -one. And I've had, I've, I have those all the time. Um, and it's best sitting in there and putting tape on it. I was doing it with Justin Reed this, uh, either this week or last week. Um, and kind of getting specific. And then making sure that you finish with, look, you've been doing a great job. You know, keep doing the good things. Let's clean this up. But I think the one-on-one -on -one com conversations are the best. Bring them back to some things that maybe I have been through, this player that I had in years past. You know, you're playing a lot like he is, and, you know, I think those kind of things. It remains to be seen whether Houston will do the same thing with their quarterbacks yeah. as they did last week. But have you gone up against a, a, a rotation like that, and how mm. do you prepare for that? I'm not sure we've gone in knowing it was going to be a rotation. We get it in certain games where a quarterback gets hurt, and you have to be ready for the backup. But... Well, listen, we uh, we got to prepare for both of them. And, you know, we have a number six jersey out there in practice and a number 10 jersey. And the players have to be aware of who's taking the snap because it looks like the football is a little bit different. Now, that could change. They could expand the package with, uh, with six and do some different things with 10. But it's two quarterbacks that I think, you know, one of them is a really good athlete. And, and let's not be fooled. He can still throw it. He didn't throw it a lot last week, but that doesn't mean he's not going to line up and throw the ball this week. So we got to be on target with what we do. You know, when, sometimes when you have that, it's more about what you're doing and not as much about how they're changing. But we, we do have to be conscious about which guy is taking the snap. It seems like the tackling the last couple of weeks has not maybe been as good as it was earlier. Yeah. Anything you can put your finger on? No, but I tell you, what's going to – I think what happens on that is when you get a play like that screen mm – -hmm then we all remember the, the little tack, you know, you know, if we knock them out and we ended up giving up three points, nobody would be saying anything about tackles. Um, 
but in this time of the year, it always needs to get better. Like you don't want your worst, worst tackling games to be at the end of the year. Right? You want those to be at the beginning of the year. There's not a lot you can do during the week. Um, I tell you what we do do, even in yesterday's practice where, you know, we don't have helmets on. And I, and I go back and show it to them the next day. I expect those guys, even without helmets, to when they approach the ball carrier to get in a position like in their mind they were tackling. I think that's the best you can do. The other things that come up that I think you can still work on uh, during practice is leverage the ball the proper way. You know, if you got two, if we're in white, right, we're the team in white, and I got two white jerseys in there in my periphery, and I got the ball carrier, make sure I finish on that side. Little things like that, uh, but hopefully that'll get better. You, you talked about the second quarter. What did you see from your zone coverages? I, about what? The second quarter, yeah. right, when you struggled, the zone coverages there. And, and your I don't remember what we were calling, to be quite honest with you. Um, couple throws with the flat and got 10-plus yards, so I just kind of... Yeah, yeah, one in specifically that you're talking about. We had it matched, and, and we came off of it. Should not have come off of it. Would have made it a little bit easier now. <laughs> Might not have been able to throw it there. There's little things like that. And we've had a couple of checkdowns. Uh, now, you go back two weeks ago on the checkdowns, a little, that, a little bit of that was because of what was going downfield, all those threats. So, you know, there was a conscious effort to say we're not going to give up the explosive pass plays, and sometimes that happens. And... You know, maybe we need to play a little bit differently, but the one, the one specific one that you're talking about, now that I remember, is we kind of came off the coverage a little bit. We should have stayed on it. Well, there's been a great – first game for Brendan Williams. Just yeah, I'll your, tell you. Your, your evaluation, although I know it's, it's just one game. Yeah, really impressed with – it's kind of like Baker Mayfield, right? I mean, Brendan was only here <laughs> three days or whatever, and I, he did an admirable job. What, what he still can do as a D lineman is knock somebody back. He really helped us on the goal line. You know, we had the two or three goal line snaps. I think they, they took a penalty and went back, and then we were out of goal line defense. But uh, he helped us there, and uh, I was real impressed with um, how he picked it up. True pro, you know, veteran. Were you in Baltimore when he was there? Yeah, the, his rookie year. Yeah. They're always different as rookies than they are when, when they're vets. But. You guys have done a really nice job with pressuring the quarterback this year, uh, and a lot of that has been timely blitzes. Where do you sense the, the four-man rush is at, at this stage, and do you feel like it needs to just be a little bit? Well, I, I did think through the course of the game, without doing all the plays, um, that we had four-man rushes where we, we have, in, in the last two weeks, we have gotten the quarterback to move. What we haven't done, and what Joe and I and the, and the guys are talking about, is we need to finish the quarterback when we get him moving around. That's where we need to get better. I think that the guys have gotten home in situations like you would want. I just think the finishing part of it is the next step for us. In the past, you know, when you've gone up against multiple quarterbacks, you've sometimes had to go to a, a former high school quarterback or something to mimic that. In the practice, South. you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And this year, you got two guys in Shane and yeah. Chris. Chris is great. Yeah. yeah Shane's how, great. How valuable has that been to have those two guys? It's a good point. Um, because when we have when we play these zone read quarterbacks and those two guys they know what they're doing in that I mean they you know we put the card up and they read it uh, but they'll look at it and know exactly what to do because they've done it you know most of their careers before they got into the NFL that that's help real helpful I, I, I value that both those guys to be able to do that coach uh, uh, a couple of years ago in the playoff game I think it was Justin Reed that had the fake and Sorensen made the tackle. Have you talked to him about that? <laughs> no, I had forgotten all about that. I remember Dan making the play. Uh, I didn't. I had until you just said that. I had no idea it was Justin. And then, is it, what is it about the Texans? Maybe that kind of like the Titans. Maybe it's just a matchup thing that gives you know the Chiefs. Some yeah, they're good. Listen, they're, it's a good football team. Well coached. They still have play. You know, uh, listen. Uh, I've been on both ends of you know the really good and the and and guys are prideful in this league. You know, they're going to play. Nobody's going to walk out there and lay down. We don't expect that. I mean, I'm expecting a, a real tough battle here. We're going down there. They played Dallas really, really well, gained some confidence. They've Listen, they've got two quarterbacks now. They scored some points, right? They almost win the game. And that's a scary team. So we better be ready. Good? All right, thank you.